Okay, so notice for that this video, you're going to want to have your book with you so that you can look at the properties on page 57. If you don't, you can watch the video without it. Just make sure that um, when you do get by your book again, so for example, if you don't have your book with you and you're at home, um, when you are by your book, make sure you do take out the notes that you take and look and see how it's related to those properties on page 57. So first thing I want to talk about is theorem 1.5. It tells us that if we have a composite function and we want to find a limit of that composite function, we can first find the limit of the inside function and then evaluate the outer function's limit using the value I got from my inside function. So if you look up here, that's what this is saying. So say you have some inside function, g, you want to know what the limit is as x approaches some number. So you plug that in and you get out. Awesome. I know my limit as x approaches c for my inside function, g is out. Great. Then the limit as x approaches l for my outside function is going to be just plugging that in. Again, we're making an assumption here that we're using direct substitution and we have continuous functions. So um, that is what this is saying here. So the limit then of my composite function, I plug into my inside function, I get l, so then I plug L into my outside function. So looking at how this works. So let's say, for example, I have my f of x equals x minus 3 and my g of x equals 2x squared. I have to find the limit as x approaches 4 for f of g of x. So my inside function of g is g of x. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out what is the limit as x approaches 4 for g of x. Well, well, since g of x is a continuous function, 2x squared is just a quadratic function, I'm going to go ahead and use direct substitution and say I have 2 times 4 squared. 4 squared I know is 16 times 2 is 32. So notice that the overall limit now is going to be f of 32, my outside function plugging in the limit I found from my inside function. Well, f of 32 is going to be 32 minus 3. Well, 32 minus 3 is going to give me 29, so my overall limit is 29. Be careful that you know the difference between a composite function and a function, two functions that have an operation happening between them. Because notice when I look at example B, this is not a composite function. This is f of x times g of x. Notice that if it were a composite function, it would be f of g of x. Or... Well, I guess that's what I had before, so I probably wasn't necessary to write that. Notice if I had a composite function, it would look like f of g of x. So notice I'm not, I'm not writing out both functions. So what I want to do here is I look at my properties on page 57, and I see that my properties tell me that I can find the limit as x approaches negative 1 of f of x, and I can find the limit as x approaches negative 1 of g of x, and just multiply those limits together. Or... I can multiply my functions and then plug negative 1, assuming it's continuous, into my resulting function. It doesn't matter which way I do it. Um, since I've already written it out like this, I'm just going to go ahead and do that, especially since I can see that I'm going to be able to use direct substitution on each of them. So when I plug, um, when I find the limit as x approaches negative 1 of f of x, because f of x is continuous, I plug negative 1 in and I get negative 1 minus 3 is negative 4. Because g of x is continuous, I do the same thing. And that gives me negative 1 squared is 1 times 2 is 2. So negative 4 times 2 is going to be negative 8, and I have that limit. Looking at one more example, notice I have the limit as x approaches c of 2 times f of x squared. This is going over two of the properties from page 57. So this is showing me the first property, which talks about how if I have a number in here that's multiplying, I can pull it out. So I can say this is the same thing as two times the limit as x approaches c of f of x squared. Okay. The other property it's telling me, and I guess I have brackets around this to show I'm evaluating first, then squaring, not squaring the x. The other property it's talking about is the power property. And the power property tells me that I can take and find this limit and then square the limit. So I don't have to worry about squaring my function. So I'm going to scroll up here because I don't remember what f of x was. f of x was x minus 3. So if I say, can I find the limit as x approaches c for x minus 3, and then after I find that limit, then I will square it. 
That's what that property on page 57 says I can do with a power or an exponent. Well, so x minus 3 is linear, so I'm going to go ahead and use direct substitution. I'm not going to get bothered by the fact that I'm directly substituting in a letter. And I'm going to have 2 times c minus 3 squared. Now, normally I'd be plugging in a number, so I could easily do that and then square my result, then multiply it by 2. Um, unfortunately, on this one, since I don't have a number, I do have to do a little bit of algebra with it. So I know order of operations is I'm going to square it. I'm going to multiply 2 by that entire amount. c minus 3 squared is c squared minus 2 times c times 3, so minus 6c plus 9. Remember, if you don't know that formula, feel free to write it twice in FOIL. That then gives me 2c squared minus 12c plus 18 for my final answer. So again, please make sure you're reviewing the properties on page 57. Um, they're basically different ways to manipulate limits. For example, pulling out a, so they call it a scalar multiple, but pulling out a constant, um, waiting to square until after you find your limit, taking a limit where you have two functions being multiplied and take, finding each limit, then multiplying them. Very similar with adding and subtracting, very similar with dividing as, as with multiplying, and then also with composite function. So notice again with composite functions, all I need to do is evaluate my inner function, find that limit, then I can plug that limit into my outer function.